Hello everyone, it's a Quantic Blue Jay here, and we are going through and doing our third episode of Phania Another Story. So, um without further ado, let's get back into the story. Bye didn't say anything when she knows my wound. Apparently she like me considered it not a very significant damage. She led me through the office to a small room that looked like an ordinary storage room. There was a small shelf for various detergents. There was a bucket and a mop next to the rack. A separate place for two animatronics was also made in the room. Something like a small sage, but without curtains. Now I understood that what stood up against the background of this room. Two animatronic dolls, bear and rabbit, one of them was sitting on the floor on the stage. Laying against the wall, the second was standing next to her. They were talking to each other, but when Bonnie and I went to the pantry, they stopped talking and almost synchronously looked at me. Well, hello. Hello, my name is John, and I'll, I'll clean up by, here at your place. I don't know if they should look like this, although maybe they have such a design, I think they're broken. John, I'm spraying Bonnie, and this is going Freddy. Golden Fairy waved at me. I waved back. Looking around the room, I quickly realized that I would not have to clean it. It looks like this is one of the few rooms, if not the only one, who did not become a victim of the party. Spring Bonnie didn't leave my side. She just kept standing there and looking at me. I wonder if it's possible to light a fire if they look. I think if she keeps looking at me like that, I'll just light up. I deliberately took a step to the side. She repeated my action. I went back to my old place and she did the same. Forgive her for that. She's often bored. So now I respect to know wherever you go. Look around more often. It sounds threatening. Each girl has her own place in this film. But it seems that these two do not have it. Oddly enough, I had a question. And what about you? Spring by step between me and Gong Fei. I gently took Spring by me by the waist. Literally moved her to the side, she didn't resist, and managed to do so in it quite easily. When I let her go, she giggled. What are you doing, the pantry? Shouldn't you have your own place? This is our place. Spring Bonnie came between me and going free again. I repeated my pre previous action, and after I released her, I put one hand on her shoulder to keep her at a distance. Spring Bonnie took my hand and shifted it to her shoulder to her head. I grinned and ruffled her hair a little. She smiled and giggled. Because we don't have such, have a stage as such. During celebrations and parties, most of the time we either move around the entire building or in a certain room. And that's why they decided to put you here? Yes. Fairly unambiguous and understandable answer. And I don't see any point in arguing with them. If everything triples them, then there's nothing to worry about. Well, that's great. I think I'll go. I'll see you again. Good. See you soon. Spring Bonnie came almost close to me and said in a whisper, Believe me, I will be there. Two goosebumps, she will be there. Then, well, let it be. It doesn't really matter to me. I looked at Bonnie, she was standing in the corridor and looking somewhere to the side. I took one step towards the exit and Bonnie immediately looked at me. Before leaving the pantry, I took a bucket and a mop. If you're ready, then we can move on. I took the bucket and mop into the office and put them near the lockers. Still, I'll start with the office and then how it goes. Is there anyone else? Yes, BB. She, um, responsible for the game room. Okay, let's go. But is this mandatory? Yes. Damn it. Bonnie led me into a spacious room. The first thing I noticed was a lot of arcade machines that were standing in a pile near one of the walls. Apparently, they were moved so that they did not interfere. I do not know what. There were also several tables and chairs in the room, which were also moved and placed on top of each other. The room was beautifully decorated, along posters with the image of animal trunks, balloons in different colors and sizes, and bounces that look like gifts. But only such bounces are something like a corporate decoration. Despite the beauty, there was also garbage in the room, but unlike other rooms, it was moved into a small pile near the exit. 
Couldn't have removed it, it made my job a little easier. I know some girls stand in there, several stands and hanging your shelves or twice. Getting closer to her and stopped to her her, is this a human? Well, at least her skin color is like that of people. Hello there. Hi. So now you're with us, right? Great. Can you help me put this room in order? I just can't be in such a situation, a dirty room. No, she's uh, also in my chart. Exactly the same, well, neck and as everything else. I must admit, whoever created it, they tried to make it look like a human. They did it. If it wasn't for the neck, I would consider her a human. That's why I'm here. I'll clean up not only here, but also in the whole building. Super, can I help you? I really need help, but I don't want to watch them clean up after someone else. Fence, I will clean up after someone, but at least I will be paid, which means this is a job. No, I, I can't ask you to do this. This is wrong. I'll do it myself. As you want, but I'll help you clean this room. Alright. Bonnie came into the room and came over to us. Is she always so happy? I don't think I've seen any other emotion in her yet. But no, I'm lying to my soul. So what, John? How do you like it here? Dirty. <laughs> yes, it's true. But I like it here. Here, somehow, calm, quiet. Peace and quiet, huh? Compared to where I was before, yes, you can say that. Where have you been before? I don't think it's that important, Bonnie. Oh, well, I'm interested. It's not difficult for me to answer. I'm an auto mechanic. You mean you were an auto mechanic? No, I'm still an auto mechanic. You can say that this job is a part-time job. Oh, it must be hard for you right now. It's too early to talk about it. I need to at least work one night. Why is that all you want to show me? Yes, everyone saw you and you saw everyone. In that case, I have to leave you. I have to work. I'll see you again. I went towards the outside of the room, BB and Bonnie didn't tell me anything. I left the room, stood for a while in the corridor, and went to the office. When I started to move away from the game room, I heard a sound. It's like something is being moved. Perhaps they decided to start playing themselves. This is their business, of course, so if you want, then let them do it. Went into the office, I sat down on a chair and moved up to the table. I had to start playing up, but I was somehow too lazy. I leaned back in my chair and looked at the ceiling, so I sat for a while until my eyes fell on the computer. I moved closer to him and pressed the power button, nothing. Pressed the power button several times in a row, again, nothing. Most likely, it is simply not connected to a power supply. Bend them down and look under the table, I was convinced of this. The circuit was completely free and the wires from the computer were just lying on the floor tangled with each other. I got under the table and started to untangle the wires. It took some time. I took connecting the computer to the power supply. I returned to the chair and turned on the computer. When I saw the Windows 7 screen save, I was a little surprised. Windows 7 and 2034 save is like... There is a feeling that this computer has not been turned on for a very long time. There are a lot of folders with various documents on the desktop. I was attracted to a folder called Staff. I opened it and started browsing through the contents. It looks like there was data on employees here. I opened the file named Nightguard. I saw Christy Dillon. There was a lot of data about her. Her place of residence, place of work, credit card history data, phone number. It's not going to climb through the data like that. I was asked to do this. I closed the file and was about to close the folder when my eyes accidentally fell on a file named Cleaners. Curiosity got the better of me and I opened it. The phone contained data about five people. I glanced through four of them and I was about to close the file when I suddenly realized that the fifth person was me, John Carver. Please work, this for customs, my address, and other data. Is this even legal? Where did they get this data? I took out my phone and somehow took a picture of the monster screen so that this part of the document could be seen. Just in case, after closing the file, I tried to delete it. When deleting, a window appeared asking me to enter a password. Clearly, I can't delete it. I just closed the folder of documents on a desktop. And it was a shortcut SCS. I launched it at the beginning. There was just a blunt screen. But after a few seconds, the inspiratory security camera system V1.5 appeared. Then just a blunt screen for a few seconds and another inspiratory. Make sure that the cameras are turned on and ready to work. 
There have been two small spheres that are located over the monitor. Clint on one of them and by this entrance switch did to full screen mode. The message no signal appeared. Clint on the screen and the square collapsed to its original size. I wonder if my job includes restoring the camera systems. I looked out of the office and looked around the cameras. Four cameras. One camera hung in the corner of the corridor. The sounds in the building are high, so I can't reach the camera. So I put a chair almost under the camera, I climbed on it. I was able to reach the camera, there was a small wire hanging near the camera. I took it in my hand and tried to attach it to the camera by touch, supporting the camera with my other hand. In a few minutes, I managed to do this, and the red light on the camera lit up. I jumped off the chair and went back to the office with him. One of the squares began to show an image of the critter. I clicked on the square and expanded it to the full screen. When I went to the office door and stuck my head out of the office, I noticed that the camera transmits a video signal almost without delay. I looked out of the office and looked at the camera and noticed that the light began to blink red. Apparently, when the camera is turned on and running, the light, it, the light lights up red all the time. And when someone looks at a particular camera, the light starts flashing. Okay, it's not difficult to restore the camera system. I'll do this during the cleaning process. First, I need to remove all the garbage, then wipe the dust well. Then wash the floors, pick up the garbage bag and open the gate. We're going to collect garbage from the table into it. That's another monitor, and I was bringing by standing outside the office and looking into it. Turn sharply at the door, I didn't notice anyone. Looking at the monitor, I saw that she was still standing there, and now she was waiting for me to turn around. Continuing to put the garbage in the bag, I said without turning to the door, Come in, Ari, I know it's still. I heard a few steps, and then silence. Turn around, I saw that Spring Bonnie was sitting on a chair with one leg crossed over the other. She was still smiling at the moment of our meeting, and now at the monitor. I restored one camera and you fell for it. Can you tell me why the air turned off? During the party, one person from the staff went and turned them off. I continued to clean up. Why would he have done that? I don't know, but I could say that he was doing something on the computer. I haven't seen him among the staff before. Do you follow him the same way you follow me? Yes. He interested me in his actions. I stopped for a second and looked at the computer. Person turned off the cameras was doing something on it. Perhaps something with the documents. Or just checked up whether he had turned them off exactly. Put the bag on the floor, I went to the computer. I need to check something, but first log out of the camera system. The first thing that came to mind was to press escape. It didn't work. I, then I would just close the program through the task manager. It worked. I wonder if she remembers this man. If his dozier is in the documents, then it's possible that she will recognize him. I turned to Spring by and saw that she was spent on the chair. Apparently, it was not going to stop. Picked up a piece of paper and made sure that there were no inscriptions on it, crumpled it up, and threw it out into her. A piece of paper flew into her lap. She remotely stopped spinning and took the same piece of paper and threw it at me. It me right in front of the forehead. I squeezed my eyes shut slightly when the piece of paper flew into me. What are you doing? He got up. She got up from her chair and came up to me. I pointed to the monster screen. If you see the person can, again, can you recognize him? Yes, I can. I opened the personal folder and stopped. It'll be a long time. We we'll, we need to speed up this process somehow. And then this, does the institution have a special uniform for the staff? Cuts in white, clears in gray, security in blue, technicians in black. Technicians? They are engaged in setting up various equipment. Monitor the tools, make sure that there is light in the building. Are you supposed to know such details? I'm observant. Observant, what kind of clothes was that person wearing? She was silent for a while. I looked at the monitor screen and ran my eyes through the folders. My attention was attracted by a folder with the name records that I had, I had not noticed before. I checked out later too. Spring by and looked at me. He was wearing black. The technician means... I opened the file with the technicians and moved slightly to the side so that Spring by could see the screen. Slowly scrolling through the list, I looked at Sumai and waited for her to stop me. On the fourth person, she lightly hit my palm in which I was holding a computer mouse. Ouch! It's him. 
All that is written next to a fellow of a man was his name, James Nerl. There is no place of form for the address was of the residence, though it's far away. On the other side, to say, I remember this file on this person. But what should I do with this? And it is unlikely that this person did something bad. Just a technician who apparently checked the cameras. I closed the file and folder with the staff. Okay, thank you. What will you do with the information you've received? I thought about it for a while. What will I do? I won't do anything. I need to clean up so that I get paid. I won't do anything. I was just interested. Your business. I continued to clean up. Springbine did not leave. I only moved away from the computer. I began to look at the co contents of the lockers. I wanted to stop her, but then I thought that she wouldn't do anything terrible. After collecting the last plastic cup in the, ba in the bag, I looked around the office. There was no more garbage in it. Put on the bag near the table, I took rag that was lying in the bucket. It was already a little wet because there was a, a little water at the bottom of the bucket. I started to wipe the table and I heard something fall behind me. I turned around and saw Spring Bunny open one of the lockers and most of the contents fell to the floor. She didn't care about what she did. She just turned to me and said with a smile, Oops. I already had some not very good words to say in my head that I wanted to, to say aloud. But I didn't say them because I noticed something strange. The locker that she opened, there were small hanging pegs, and one of them pushed it aside. These pegs were covered with other objects, and I did not notice them. When I examined the locker, I took the shocker out of my pocket and put it in one of the three pegs. The shocker fit perfectly. This is a place for equipment. For a shocker, for a flashlight. The third place, for what? Spring Brian looked over my shirt at the locker. The gun. Really? Yes. Where is it? The manager locks him in his office. He gives it only to those who he trusts. Did you follow the manager too? I have a lot of free time. I have no doubts about that. I'm getting a little uncomfortable being around her. Who knows what she can do? Until the thought I decided to leave the teaser in the locker. If I'm going to use it, it's definitely not against them. Picking up everything that fell out of the locker from the floor, I carefully put everything in the locker and closed it. Spring Bonnie moved away from the locker and just stood near the door and laying against the wall. I went back to the table and dusted off. I looked at the floor near the table and noticed there are batteries that I took out the watch. Okay, the clock also needs to be restored. Moreover, I kind of finished with the office. It remains only to wash the floors. I will do this at the very end and immediately throughout the building. I dumped the wall clock that I left on the table and inserted the batteries into it. I looked at the time and they showed 12.04, the same time I took the batteries out of them. We should set them up, but I looked at my wristwatch 5.51. Into some of the time, same time on the wall clock, I hung it on the wall. For some reason, I was not at all surprised by the fact that such hours passed very quickly. Taking a few steps back to place in chair near the table, I looked at Spring by. She was smiling. All night long, she was smiling. Why is she so happy? I probably won't know it. Take her bag of garbage, I hid it for the exit of the office. Are you leaving already? Yes, the shift is almost over, or rather. I snapped to my fingers, and at the same moment, the clock began to play a small melody that met the end of my shift. It's definitely over now. I went to her and ruffled her hair. She closed her eyes, or I did it. See you later. Bye, John. I'll be watching. I don't think so. I took a step back and nodded to her at the door. She slowly walked out and left. I looked around the office again compared to what it was before. He looks much better now, but the floor is still dirty. I stopped in the door and for some reason remembered Fancy. She really got into my soul. Maybe I should look in on her before I leave? The clutch should sit so far. Why not? I ran out through the other door and went to her. I stopped in front of the room and put the bag on the floor only after that I went into the room. Once and Mangle were sitting on one of the stages and talking about something. What exactly was not heard? I did not go into the back of the room but I only stopped in the doorway and slightly stamped my foot. Mangle was the first to notice me. Oh! Fancy looked out from behind her and she saw me she visibly cheered up and jumped off the stage and slowly approached me. Hello again, John! 
Do you just come to, to us? She put her hand on my shoulder and slowly ran it down my arm. Or for something else. I can not say goodbye, my shift is over. Well, in this case, see you tomorrow, John. She was spitting that sentence in my ear. She had to like this on purpose for me, or she always liked this. I'm afraid I won't find out either. Mingle watched it all in silence when I looked into her eye. She looked away in embarrassment. Yes, till tomorrow. Bye, Mingle. Mingle wasn't looking at me, she just nodded silently when I said goodbye to her. Fancy seemed by my side until I left the room. Once I leave the room, I picked up the bag again and headed towards the outside of the building. I came home around 7.55. First time, I worked the night shift, so I was unaccustomed to sleep. I still have to go to work at the auto repair shop today. I wonder if that man really settled the question about my working day with my boss. I'll probably find out in a few hours. The working day starts at 10. If I'm not woken up by phone calls from my boss, then everything's fine. So on the sofa, I put the phone on my charge. But I never made it to the bedroom. I fell asleep on the sofa in the living room in the same clothes I came in. And I think that will end it for today, or for this video. Um, yeah, so, uh, we met, um, Spring Bonnie, we met Golden Freight, and we met BB. Um, and he is getting a mysterious film about why his name is in the documents, and who this person is who messed with security cameras. Um, I can't wait for all of y'all to, um, see the rest of this series. Um, the series is pretty fun, and like I said in previous videos, it's really unique. Um, but yeah, so, um, that's the third episode of Fania, Another Story. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good one, everyone.